What's going on, everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch. Today, we're going to be breaking down Fearless's Winston, who not only was a player on the Owen 40 Shanghai Dragons, got dropped year two, picked up again year three. When the Dragons were down 0 3 in the main melee grand final, they swapped him in to switch over to a dive play style to run it back on a massive reverse sweep, four maps in a row to win the APAC grand final. And Fearless's pristine Winston play was at the core of their success, in my humble opinion. If you learn anything from this, guide today the number one thing that i want you to internalize is maximizing winston is about controlling the map the cart and making space for your team sounds simple enough but in truth navigating around these maps in order to play in spots where you can't die is quite difficult and fearless well in the entire four map reverse sweep only had one bad dive in my opinion and i would call this kind of an old school combo where he's coming in over the top and they're attempting to burst down fits but he's surrounded by by his entire team and between the healing burst damage potential it just isn't enough for fearless and his tracer teammate to find a kill there maybe that was the only option they had when they were already down a player but generally these scrappy aggro focus fire dives that we saw many eras ago are just non-existent in today's overwatch due to how strong some defensive and responsive cooldowns are to stop it so instead of doing that here on gibraltar holding blue box is the major launching point for the attackers to get any angles the other option is to go into server as well but by controlling this fearless has the opportunity to come down and just touch the cart and deny sight lines for the enemy to land their abilities and when presented with the option with the enemy winston diving in he could go aggressive deep but instead to play defensive around the ana is always the call for this team and likely in general the best thing you can do when you understand what's carrying in this team fight we will see a few different variations on on team comps as we go along this is a mirror match here and your engagement tactics are going to change depending on the matchup but typically nimble mobile dps are not diveable and don't have big mid fight carry generally speaking sombra and echo fit in that description unlike a character like widow or mccree or even ash who has tons of mid fight damage we don't have to fear them as much instead we're looking to manipulate the enemy on his line of sight and set up our own i want you to notice how little damage Fearless takes when he's manipulating the enemy backline and how he comes back to focus the enemy's front line after disrupting that carry piece. Ana is the carry, and if the enemy Ana is just disrupted so she can't land shots or is zoned out by your bubble, then your Ana has a field day in the mid fight. And as this full Gibraltar A hold proceeds, it really comes down to which Ana was able to have enough space to land their abilities. Even when Fearless gets EMP'd, they can't focus fire him because Nano Boost gets treated as a defensive ult, and they just can't get Fearless off of Bedosian's Ana in the back. After trying a few different paths, Dynasty just can't get their backline in position to land the same type of value that Izaki on the defensive side is landing, and because of that, they're never really getting a foothold in this fight. For another example of this cart control and backline enabling play, we're gonna take a look at how Fearless plays Junkertown, which shouldn't really be a dive map, by the way, but how he gets away with it by his team playing around cover, holding onto his bubble for forever long, not committing to it, and instead soft engaging onto the cart, holding leap to get away and allowing any incidental poke damage that comes through from the enemy to try to get him off the cart to go into his Ana's nano boost. That's the key here. We can see this from our Ana's perspective as well, how much we're charging her and using our small bit of brawling to contest the cart and maintain it and sculpt that engagement to force the enemy attackers to come into us while draining time off the payload. That's what's cool about Winston on defense now and why in some ways he's a bit better when used this way because it's harder to aggressively go in but using the cleave of his tesla and his mobility to touch cart and then escape when he's overwhelmed he really can drain a lot of resources out of the enemy and it's that mid fight where winston's the weakest but it's when you have nano boost and primal rage where he's the strongest and that's where you're allowed to go from this controlling play style into an aggro one using the emp and nano boost to clean up the fight then we'll have primal for the next one it develops a nice chain of ultimates that you can cycle but 
the thing that I want you guys to realize and pay close attention to, we'll see this again on King's Row, but you want to hold on to your bubble far longer than you think you should. The two times you want to use it is when you're blocking a key cooldown you see the enemy using, like if Ana's throwing a nade at you and you don't want to die to that, block it with that, or when you are actually going to commit in on the engage. On this King's Row clip, you can see what I'm talking about, where Fearless's job here is to hold cart, act as a battery for his Ana, and respond to the enemy's attack. He has leap, he has bubble, and there's no reason to use any of them until the enemy actually commits onto him. The bubble blocks the Ana nade and allows him to stay on the cart much longer when he is overwhelmed and he can't kill the rally, jumps away, backs up to peel, confirms the kills on the attackers, and then before you know it, he's back onto the cart to drain it its time yet again. Notice how each time he re-enters into the fight, it's only when he has bubble available to commit down or he uses cover and leap to get away. Those are the two major ways to do it. And if you as the Winston player know the extent of your limits and what you can get away with, you can make progress on the objective extremely expensive. The dragons do lose members in some of these fights, but as long as he has health, bubble, and leap to get away, they can still fight here. They have the positional advantage being the defenders and re resources to use to make this fight scrappy and forcing the enemy to use resources to get out of this choke is better than them being able to use it on the checkpoint fight which is more important to you because that's when you have an advantage of a bit closer of a respawn. And if you can choose, both teams would rather use their ults to beat fights where the enemy's at a respawn advantage. And so by the time they even get any cart moving here, the dragons are allowed to win a fight with basically only primal rage, which is pretty strong. It was expensive for the defense, but manipulating cart time and your own respawns is the way to really drain out the clock. And if you have to lose streets checkpoint to an ult stack, you almost don't mind it as long as the attackers aren't barreling into third with many minutes to go. Now let's talk a bit about changing up your engagement tactics based on what the enemy is playing. Here the dragons are looking to go for a brawl comp, which I think has the opportunity to run over the enemy playing Brig, but because the dynasty go for Bap Zen without a Brigida, well, now the dive is a lot stronger and they have so much confidence in this that they swap to it, allowing the enemy to get first capture. This is a scary gamble to take. But if you know your engagements are going to be perfect on them, you can set this up in an absolutely marvelous flank, an engagement by Fearless here. Notice how he isn't tunnel visioning on confirming kills, acknowledging the amount of healing the enemy has, and instead manipulating the fight and getting out. Here, this bubble blocks off the backline of the enemy, forces immortality field, charges up a third third of primal rage it only takes about 200 damage in this entire exchange this is a way where the dive can use the enemy's bunker against them because they want to be on the high ground but winston is best playing into the high ground able to go up and down at will dropping a bubble onto it so that they have no range all of a sudden and they're forced to play back in close quarters, which is not where they want to be. This means profit on the flank fight is at a disadvantage with no one able to help him because five players of the dynasty are committed in to surviving up against this dive. And the thing I'll note that's a little bit different about this dive, because the enemy's playing a static comp with poke, Fearless's job changes here a bit, but the goal is still the same. If our worry in the previous examples was the enemy Ana, well now it's the Ash's line of sight, the Bap Zen, disrupting their ability ability to damage your team makes a lot of space for you so much so that the dynasty know they can't play that comp up against this they go to set up the mirror but for this segment I want us to pay close attention to Fearless's ability to use his cover and pathing to stay alive notice how as he walks through this map he's always hugging around a piece of cover but isn't able to get a split off the entire team is on him his team isn't ready so he's got to get out gets back up top to another piece of cover looking to carve off some of the fight for himself but counting that the peel is focusing on him, he dives away yet again, falls back down into another piece of cover until the hack wears off, and then he can go deep and receive the nano boost from his Ana. He's making himself so hard to hit and focus down in each one of these positions that despite the enemy chasing after him and launching cooldowns at him, he's able to put the enemy in a no-win situation. They kind of have to focus him a bit. If they don't pay attention to him, he will be able
able to get a backline assassination. So the Brig and the Sombra Hack and the Diva chase him around the map, but able to dodge that, it's just farming up our own nano boost. And then when we have that resource, we can go in deep and the enemy can't really do anything about it. A couple of little tricks for you. As he gets hacked and he sees that he's about to be overwhelmed, turning his head hitbox is massive for denying a lot of damage onto you. Buys enough time for the nano boost to come in, then he can completely reverse it back. I mean, this is just masterful stuff by the dragons. Footsie inside of his bubble to outplay the enemy Ana and Brigida. Neither of them can hit a flail or sleep on him when you go ring around the rosy inside your barrier like this. And this is kind of what the heart of the new Winston playstyle is. It's much more about finding ways to survive to get up to those other abilities that let you go aggro. It's far more about dodging. It's far more about staying in optimal positions that can help you dodge the ways the enemy can kill you. Now, it's important that you learn all that passive, smart, intelligent play, but when it comes to the Primal Rage, you need to set it up to pop off and know what your goals are with it because the same problems of it being troublesome to confirm kills as Winston with how the balance of the game has gone still exists, but what we can learn from Fearless is that dividing and conquering is the goal with it in the same way that we were doing so in the other engagements, but Primal Rage gives us the opportunity to physically disperse the enemy at our will. Because the enemy's committing to Brawl, possibly sick of Fearless running all over them this entire series, he knows that they're all going to be grouped up, so his next dive is going to get him a Primal Rage, so he plays really aggro on the enemy Death Ball, but importantly, fast, in order to dodge the enemy's Freeze, which can insta-kill him. Farming up damage, manipulating the enemy comp, and then goes in with the Primal Rage to try to displace a target towards his team for Focus Fire. This is gonna get the Reaper killed, and the enemy is popping ultimates, but we get our EMP off to punish the enemy Moira, and then it's all clean up after that. Soul tried to clutch it back with the Blizzard, but it was far too late. The Primal did far too much. And the same rules of manipulating Ana to not be able to heal her team was twofold there with a Moira on the enemy, where even with Cole, I mean, there's no way she was going to be able to heal her Reaper teammate, and he's kind of the carry of that comp to actually be able to kill anything. Now, the thing you got to realize when you're using Primal Rage is because your real play is the displacement to split the team, you don't have to worry about focusing the kills to start. You're not necessarily the damage, you're the battering ram in order to dislodge the enemy. Keeping your life matters more than getting the kills yourself. Notice how here, fighting mid-air up against the enemy Sigma, he uses the Primal Rage cast, even though he had health, just to dodge the enemy's Gravitic Flux and continue this fight. He gets in the middle of the team, knocks them all around in all directions, but doesn't overstay his welcome in the middle of the team. Then being out of the fight is enough. If the back line can't see the front line, that can't heal, and they're just gonna topple. Another cool one here, notice again, playing on cover, playing around corners, but this time notice his patience on the Primal Rage. He does get hit by the Gravitic Flux, but until he sees the damage that's going to kill him, there's no reason to pop it early without seeing the follow-up there. He didn't deem it necessary, but after the Transcendence is done, he's able to land his first initial leap onto the Zenyatta, then channel the Primal Rage. And this looks like it's about to be a one fight for the Soul Dynasty, but this just shows you how powerful Primal can be. Gets the Mega Health Pack to regen his health. He can go in on the Immortality Field and damage and displace targets above it so they can can't even get the immunity effect from it. They focus it down anyway, but this is a trick I have seen him do a couple times, trying to juggle targets upward out of it. And this is just disgusting stuff. I mean, this is a fight that if this primal doesn't get this level of value, they definitely lose. And shows you how primal up against some of these more static comps is just immense. Whereas the double bearer here can feel a lot easier to play in a normal mid fight because you have so much cover to play around. When this primal comes out, I dare say you should basically win if your mechanics are good enough. There's a lot of poke damage to whittle you down as Winston, but as Soul Dynasty begins to figure out, they feel the need to go to Reaper May to deal with Winston because they just aren't getting it done with their backliners when he continuously outplays the enemy Brig stuns and Ana sleeps with all the plays we've been breaking down thus far. And well, guys, that's gonna be everything for today's guide video. I hope you found it useful and are able to employ some of these tactics to divide and conquer and be a dominant force in your front line outplaying the enemies. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave it a like. It really does help us out. Let us know that you're enjoying the content. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and be sure to hit the bell icon to actually get notified when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter where we tweet out news updates and dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. We'll see you guys next time.